Cataractcoach.com. What are these white opacities? The patient has a ruptured globe and a corneal laceration. And the resident saw the patient, says, yes, there's a flat anterior chamber, there's a corneal laceration, and it's a ruptured globe from a gardening injury. And when we zoom in here, what are all these white spots? My resident didn't know. He was totally flummoxed. Do you know what they are? Look at those white spots. They're coming through that laceration onto the ocular surface. That, my viewers of Cataract Coach, is vitreous. The patient has asteroid hyalosis. So you can see this injury is so severe, vitreous is coming from behind the iris, up into the anterior chamber, and out of that corneal laceration. Yes, that is vitreous. So this obviously needs to be fixed. So the resident's doing the case here. There's that initial laceration. A paresthesia is being made. So it's a good idea to start off with a paresthesia so you have access here. You want to put some viscoelastic in the eye. You want to, first things first, let's seal up that corneal laceration. So going inside the eye here, don't overfill it, but put in enough viscoelastic that you can form the anterior chamber. Now coming in here, you can use this spatula and you can sweep the vitreous back. This patient's going to need much more surgery than this. So the resident's job is going to be to close the laceration now. And then at the same time, our retina fellow is here who's going to do a vitrectomy. So it turned out this patient had an intraocular foreign body from this gardening accident. And that foreign body is in the vitreous. So this laceration ended up having an effect, of course, on the cornea. This foreign body then went through the iris. It damaged the lens, the lens capsule, it damaged the zonular support, it went through the vitreous, and now it's lodged in the retina. So the first step is we need to close the corneal laceration. So the resin's going to do that with a lot of these 10-0 nylon sutures. Not the best video quality, not the best centration, but it's what we, can, what we have, so we'll take it. So the key in doing this is, yeah, you want to make sure you have a nice watertight um, closure of the incision. You don't want to pass the suture through many, many times. You want to do it as few times as, you, as possible because you don't want to chew up that corneal tissue. So once you've got it sutured up and you think it's watertight, you can do a Seidel test. And then again, this patient is going to have, at the today's sitting, same same surgery, going to have a partial plane of vitrectomy and retrieval of the intraocular foreign body. So the suturing here, we have some good videos, including some good articles, more than just a video, on how to manage these patients with ruptured globes and corneal lacerations. If you go to the cataractcoach.com website, yes, you're going to have to leave, leave YouTube for a moment. If you go to cataractcoach.com, use the keyword search and look for ruptured globe or, or laceration, and you'll find those articles. And it shows you when you pass these sutures, what's the technique? What depth should you place that suture, do you know? I'm not gonna tell you. You're gonna have to look it up on that website and see the article. Because there are articles, there are figures that I hand drew, I drew the diagrams to really explain it to you. So here again, closing up this um, incision, or laceration, pardon me, and now injecting more viscous, you can see where it's leaking out from. It's gonna take more sutures than you think. And so we'll end up fast forwarding this and going a little faster here, and you can see those sutures look reasonable. You may want to also make the sutures a little on the longer side, then they can span more of the laceration width. You'll probably end up with fewer sutures. If you make very tiny sutures like this, you'll need more of them. If you have a little bit longer sutures, uh, more bite on either side of the laceration, then you'll need fewer sutures. So everything's done there. Get those rotated into the cornea, and then check with the, you can check with the Wexel initially, but then you're gonna have to check with the Seidel test as well, with the fluorescein dye. And then our retina fellow is going to do a full vitrectomy and lensectomy. This patient is going to be left aphakic, and the patient will have a guarded outcome. Time will tell. Thank you for watching.